Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. we got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Ken, and thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Rich Walsh, Paul Zeiss will be joining me in just a few seconds, and we're going to be talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins. Another devastating, deflating loss. Pick an adjective about tonight's loss, and you can use a lot of them. Uh, they lost tonight in overtime, blew a lead. They were up 3-2, to two, end up losing 4-3. Late in overtime, Matt Murray gives up another goal. And look, Matt Murray, he made some big saves throughout the game, but he did not make a big save at the end of the game, Paul. And this is my problem with Matt Murray. I understand Evgeny Malkin could have ended it. Uh, Phil Kessel could have ended it. Um, Buffalo took, had, a, had a chance there at the end. They took advantage of it. They checked to see if it was offsides. And, you know, that was the one thing. I don't know if you saw those replays. You were probably on your way down here. But uh, it looked like he could have been offsides. Uh, but they said he had control of the puck, and the goal counts, pens lose. They get a point. They're still on the outside looking in, but, you know, they might go back to this loss, the Flyers' loss, the loss to Buffalo the first time around at home. These are games that the Penguins should win, but they're losing to inferior teams. You know, and I, I tweeted on – I just tweeted a little bit ago. You know, you draw a lot of parallels to the, the Steelers' season, how they keep blowing games against inferior opponents, and that seems to be happening here. Yeah, this was a tough loss tonight. I think, you know, you, you, Matt Murray, I didn't like either of the last two goals that he gave up, but there were so many chances for the Penguins to win this game Yeah, that it shouldn't have come down to that anyway. I thought the Penguins should have scored like six goals in this game. Um, you know, give, the, give the, the Sabres credit. They scored when they needed to score, and, you know, Connor Sherry made the, the big one uh, at the end there to win. But it, it, if you're a team that's fighting for a playoff spot, and you are a team that is desperate, you can't lose a game like this that you have pretty much won. And the thing about it is the Penguins, to me, I don't know, I don't know if they really understand or they're good. Like One of the reasons the Islanders are where they're at is because when they get a lead like this, they go into protect the lead mode. They don't care. They don't care how boring it is. They don't care how ugly it is. They don't care if the other teams are you know, booing them and everything else. The Penguins still keep trying to play their game, and I think sometimes they just need to go into, all right, let's just not give up any chances here. Instead of, you know, we don't need to score. Let's just, let's just buckle down on defense. And, and, and I, I don't think they do that enough. I think they just want to be riverboat gamblers too much, and it ends up costing them because they end up turning the puck over in their end and doing the things and giving, giving up odd men uh, rushes. I agree with you. I think that third goal by the Sabres was way worse. Brandon Montour was – yeah. Out by the blue line. I understand there was traffic in front, but uh, glove side, Matt Murray, uh, another. That, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a bad, it was it a was, bad goal. That was a bad goal. Um, and it just seems like he's given up bad goals at the most inopportune times. There's no question. I mean, you know, and that's been his season. And really, if you think about it, he's had some really spectacular performances, but he has been very very inconsistent. There's no other way to say it. I mean, he's just completely very inconsistent. I've defended him multiple times saying that I, I thought he was a big game goaltender. Maybe not a season-long goaltender that's going to win you games like Mark andre Fleury does, but this guy steps up at big moments. And I think right now the Penguins are in big moment time, and he hasn't stepped up. So I'm starting to wonder if that, if that you know, the mindset's still there. If he's starting to question uh, himself a little bit. You know, kickers go through this all the time. Yeah. And, and I was the, trying to compare him to Chris Boswell and what was going on with him missing all the field goals this year. Um, I mean, that same, that the same thing could happen to a goaltender. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on. The defense in front of him is not very good. And let's face it, it's not. I mean, And they're, we, they're down two defense. We too. keep trying to come up with all kinds of different excuses and this and that and the other thing. Jack Johnson, I don't care what Jim Rutherford and all them say. I know he's had a couple of good games. He has not been good for them this year, yeah. period. Over the course of the year, he has not been, he has not been good. Um, you know, if you, look at, uh, if you look at what else, uh, who, what's the name of the guy that they just brought in? I don't think he's going to make them better. The guy that they just got from Vancouver. What's yeah, Goose Bander. Go, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Goose Bander. Eric, Eric, Eric uh, is that his name? Eric, whatever. That, he hasn't been, he's not going to be an, 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 an upgrade for them either. He's, their defense is just not good. It's they not need to be get good. Brian Dumoulin and Chris Right, Of course, back. there's That's no question. They need to, they need that, to get those guys help. healthy. But they, those guys have been healthy and they haven't been good. They need to get um, Brian Russ back. You know, I guess the good news is 
Guys like, um, it looks like Brian Dumoulin's on his way back. Chris Letang's still up in the air, hasn't even skated yet. So that really concerns me. I think mm -hmm. they need both those guys back. You know, uh, 58 was, is having an MVP-type season, and it's, it's tough losing that guy. But, but again. So before we go to the break, you know, we got to go to break here real, real quick. W what are their chances of making the postseason? I think they're going to make it. They're I think they're better than Montreal. I think they're better than Carolina. They're going to make it. They're gonna, they might be the eighth, you know, the eighth team, but they're going to make it. I just think they're better than those two teams. I thought the Steelers were better than a lot of teams, too. Well, you know, we'll see. we got All a lot of games. We do. Uh, 18 more left. All right. Back in a couple minutes, we're going to be taking your phone calls. 412-575-2600 is the number. We have one line open. Give us a call. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, celebrating 25 years as Pittsburgh's number one home exterior expert in roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, where honesty and integrity still matter.